Hi, Christmas crew. Want to make your Christmas extra special? These holiday treats are just what Santa ordered. Each one is simple and super affordable. Let me share my treat making secrets with you. And if you're new here, my name is Shannon and welcome to the Cozy Christmas Cottage. Let's start with a breakfast donut wreath. You're going to head to Dollar Tree and pick up a green foam wreath and also some pre-made donuts. You're going to start by taking that foam wreath and putting it onto a plate. We do want to cover up that foam with some saran wrap. So just take a few different pieces and wrap it around to the back side and then replace it down onto your plate. You're also going to be needing some toothpicks for this project, which you can also grab from Dollar Tree if you don't already have some. And then I also picked up some donut holes from the grocery store to kind of fill in some of the smaller holes. A tip here is to break your toothpicks in half and insert those into your foam wreath so they're not sticking up too high or you don't have to push them down too far into the wreath and simply just set your donuts right on top. I would also recommend using those larger donuts first and then using the smaller donut holes to come in and fill in some of those gaps. You can also group some of those donut holes together to add some variety, but you're basically just going to work your way all the way around the wreath until all that saran wrap and the foam is covered. And then if you're wondering how many donuts I used, I used one pack of the powdered donuts, one pack of the cinnamon donuts, and then one pack of the donut holes, but I had some donut holes left over. So basically three things of donuts covers one of these smaller sized wreaths. So it's looking pretty cute once we finally get this wreath completely covered, filling in all of those holes with those donuts. And then we're going to garnish it just a little bit more and give it some more Christmas colors. So I'm displaying mine on a raised cake tray, but it looks cute just on a countertop too. We're going to take some cranberries that are fresh and just add those right around the wreath to add like that little pop of red and berry look that you would see on a regular wreath. And then tuck a few little sprigs of some rosemary around too to add some green. And then I know we already have a lot of powder going on with these donuts, but if you give this a couple shakes of some powdered sugar around, it will make your wreath look a little bit snowy too. This becomes such a beautiful presentation for a breakfast or a brunch, makes for a fun little treat for kiddos. They could even help with this. This was really, really simple, quick and easy, and also super affordable too, and just really turns out beautiful in the end. Here's another tip. You can make this ahead of time. If you want to save some time for Christmas morning or a special get together, just wrap the whole thing in saran wrap and it's ready to use when you are. Now we're gonna make the most easy Christmas candy with the help of our crock pot and only three ingredients. You need some dried peanuts, some semi-sweet chocolate chips, and some white almond bark. We're just simply going to take some nonstick spray and put it into our crock pot first and put those peanuts in the bottom. We're gonna layer it next with our almond bark. It definitely helps to break this up. I used a knife or you can just pop it apart if you have some muscles. I tried, it didn't work great, so this knife just kind of came in handy to pop everything apart and we're just going to put that in the crock pot on top of our peanuts. The next layer is going to be our chocolate chips. You're just going to shake this right on top. Now I'm going to mention that I did half this recipe. So if you want to double it up and you have a big enough crock pot, just double the amount of supplies and I'll also put a small easy recipe down in the description box for you to follow if you want to remake this. We're going to put our crock pot on low, put the lid on top, and then set our timer for one hour. Then we're going to come back, remove the lid, and give this a good stir. Then we are gonna replace the lid on the crock pot and set our timer for 30 more minutes. And I'm gonna leave the sound of this timer in the video just for nostalgia. It reminds me of my childhood and my grandma cooking in the kitchen at Christmas time. Let me know in the comments below if you also had a timer that buzzed like that. I just love it. After those 30 minutes are up, we are just gonna give this another good stir. 
And now you're gonna need to line a baking sheet with some wax paper. And I have to mention this cute, cute Christmas wax paper that I got from Amazon. It came in a big pack with tons of just different cute prints and patterns. And I just fell in love with it. You'll see it a lot in this video. So I will link it down below for you. I think I've got enough now to last me the rest of my life and all the Christmas treats I'll be making throughout the years. But it just makes it a little bit more fun and festive and you can even use it to wrap your Christmas the streets in which you'll see that too in this video this paper though the waxy side is on the back so you will have to flip it over for this project or this recipe and you're gonna need some sprinkles and a cookie scoop it's gonna make it a little bit easier for us to create this Christmas candy so you'll just scoop the mixture out of your crock pot with that cookie scoop and just scoop it onto that wax paper Before these cool, you will go ahead and add your Christmassy sprinkles on top. That's going to make them a little bit more festive looking. And then you can leave them out for four hours uh, at room temperature to harden, or you can put them into your refrigerator for an hour to completely harden. So then we can then put them into some containers to save them. You can definitely find some great options at Dollar Tree, which is what I do as I always grab them from there, wash them up. I'm also going to be adding some of that cute wax paper to the inside of this Dollar Tree container and then just placing my Christmas candy inside. And yes, of course, we have to test these out and make sure that they are delicious. And luckily, these turned out fabulous. So yummy. Such a great treat to have at your Christmas uh, parties or get togethers or makes a really great gift to you. This is a really fun way to dress up your hot cocoa, make it a little bit more fun. You're gonna need some whipped cream, just the tubs of it. And I always keep mine in the freezer. So I wish I had let it sit out or sit in the refrigerator to kind of thaw out for a while. So once it had some time, I just scooped it onto a cookie sheet and spread it out. You do want it to be about, I would say, a half an inch thick. Next, we're gonna put it back into the freezer to harden up. I left mine in for an hour and thought that would be enough, but it really wasn't quite hard enough. So if you have a deep freezer, I would probably do that as it probably needs to be a really cold freezer for it to harden up. Now we're gonna get our hot cocoa ready and grab out some cookie cutters. Just make sure your cookie cutters are about the same size as the opening of your mug. So it will sit down in there for you. Just cut it out like you would a cookie. And then we're gonna take a spatula and kind of scoop our whipped cream up from the cookie sheet and add it into our coffee mug or our hot cocoa mug. Now remember, this is whipped cream. It is not a marshmallow, so it's not super duper thick, but it does hold its shape pretty good if you get it cold enough. And then you just scoop it into your mug and you have a beautiful snowflake on top of your hot cocoa. Here is another tip. If you wanna make these ahead of time, you can go ahead and do that using some wax paper. So just cut all of your whipped cream into your cookie cutter shapes and then sandwich them in between some wax paper. I just laid them all out onto the wax paper first and then added a second sheet on top and then cut them apart. And then we're gonna add them to some Tupperware so that way we can put them back into the freezer and individually pull them out when we want to use them and you can definitely get so many out of these using a couple little containers of whipped cream and just cutting them out like you would cookies and here they are all ready to go in the fridge for the next time you are ready to have hot chocolate 
Here's another three ingredient recipe that is so easy and so fancy when we're done with it. Take a cookie sheet, line it with some parchment paper, and you're gonna need one roll of crescent rolls. We're gonna lay them with the wider side in the shape of a candy cane. So the points of your triangles will be facing out. Make sure they are overlapping and kind of press them down where they meet to make one big pastry sheet. Then our next ingredient is some cream cheese frosting. We're gonna take a spatula and just add that along where all of these make that candy cane shape and kind of overlap. Now I will say when you see in a little bit, I went a little bit crazy and add a little bit too much frosting, I think. So maybe a thinner layer here would be best. Then we're gonna add some fruit preserves. I found mine at Target and oh my goodness, this stuff is delicious if you've never tried it before i'll try to find a link for you or grab some the next time you're at the grocery store but like i said i found mine at target we're just going to add some of that preserve right on top of the frosting It is looking so yummy already, but we need to finish up this pastry. We're gonna take those points of our triangle, lay them over those preserves and the frosting and kind of tuck them underneath so everything stays in place for us. Work your way all the way through the candy cane. To bake this, I just used the directions on the back of the crescent can, which said I needed my oven at 375 degrees. And then I took the pastry and just put it in the oven for about 10 minutes. Now, I'm not gonna lie, when I opened the stove and saw the big mess that this thing kind of looked like, I was a little bit worried. So if you find yourself in this situation, do not worry. We are gonna beautify this, it's not a problem. So this is what it looked like. I went ahead, let it cool, and then I came in with a pastry, I don't know what it's called, knife, but it's not really a knife, and a spatula, and just took two of the pastries at a time and moved them from the baking sheet to a cutting board, or you could put yours on a platter. All right, so crisis averted here. It looks so much better on my cutting board. I came in with the extra frosting and added those to the tops of the pastry. Gives it more of that candy cane look. Garnishing again with some cranberries and some rosemary. And again, coming in with that magical powdered sugar snowiness on top that just kind of makes everything look a little bit more magical. And it just looks so pretty. Of course, prettiness is one thing, but it's also delicious, which is the most important thing. And now I'm obsessed with that preserve. It tastes so good on toast and on muffins. So if you want to give that a try, I highly recommend it. This next one is so fancy, but it is so easy. I promise if I can do this, anybody can do this. We're gonna need some melting chocolate that's white, some mini Reese's, some decorative cupcake toppers, some white sprinkles, and some Oreos. You can find some of these items at Dollar Tree, so check there before anywhere else. You do need some good white melting chocolate though. I got mine from Target. Melted it down in a bowl, stirred it up, and we are gonna do some snow globe cookies that also have some candy on them with the Reese's. It's gonna look so cute when we're done. So we're gonna take our Oreo and we're gonna add it to the melted white chocolate, cover it up really good, let it drip off, and then we're gonna set it on some parchment paper. Go ahead and repeat this process for however many Oreos you want. Before the chocolate hardens, take your decorative cupcake toppers. I found these at Target. We're just gonna lay those on top of the Oreos. And again, before that chocolate melts again and we get all of those decorative pieces on the tops of the Oreos, then we're gonna add some of those white sprinkles on top. That's gonna be the top of our snow globe and give us our snowflake look. Lovely songs we all heard 
I took these cookies to the refrigerator and let them set for about 30 minutes so they could harden up again before moving on to the next step, which includes those mini Reese's. So I did save some of that extra white chocolate and put it back in the microwave for about 15 seconds. You don't want it too melty because we're gonna use it as glue to put these Oreos into uh, and on top of the Reese's. So just put a small amount on the bottom of the Reese's, set the cookie in the uh, chocolate, let it sit for a second so it grabs on, and then you have the base of your snow globes. So obviously it's not snowing in my kitchen, but I love this effect as it gives that snowy look to our snow globes. You can set them up in a little wintry scene like I have on a cutting board with some little houses and trees, or they look cute on a plate, on a tiered tray, however you wanna display these. These also make super cute gifts if you wanna put them in little cellophane bags and put a little bow on top. I would love to know which one of these recipes or treats was your favorite. Let me know down in the comments below if you're gonna give those a try. And I'll have another Christmas video popping up on your screen. Go ahead and click that and I will see you over there. Wishing you all a very merry, happy holiday season.